Okay, I'll say it one more time for the recording. This meeting is being recorded for Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Jennifer. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's August 25, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is comprised of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what it is you're proposing to do and for you to ask us questions. Also, the commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own opinions or feelings. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulation, or table it for further consideration. In rare occasions, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning, inlet wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review other permits that may be required before you be begin your construction. With this, I will ask Commissioner Lyons if he's appeared to read our legal notice. No? You're uh, muted, Chris. He's coming. Sorry about that. I got okay. booted out of my system, so I have to pull up uh, my notice. If everyone can talk amongst themselves, I'll be right with you. No worries. Beautiful day in Weathersfield. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, here we go, I believe. I haven't printed it out, made it larger. Um, but, all right, let's see. No, that's the... Uh... I'm happy to read it if you want. Uh, I think it's coming up. Thank you, though, Jen. Okay. Okay, uh, that's the agenda. I pulled up the wrong one. Pressure. All right, legal notice, Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, August 25th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Application 5043-20, renewal by Anderson, seeking to install two replacement double hung windows on front of house at 336 Hartford Avenue. Application 5044-20, Heather Stone, seeking to construct wood railings and spindles around existing deck and stairs and add wood lattice skirting at 9 Main Street. Application 5045-20, James Clark, seeking to install six-foot cedar fencing in rear and side yards at 9 Center Street. Application 5046-20, Lou Michaels, seeking to install 90 inches high by 90 eight inches wide wood gazebo in rear yard at 303 Garden Street. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the mail, in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized, dated at Weathersfield, Connecticut, this 10th day of August, 2020. Thank you, Chris. Uh, for attendance purposes, since we are online and we can't see who's here, we have uh, Commissioners Wolf, Raymond, Lyons, Ovian, and Mead, and alternates uh, Miglis and Kathleen Williams. I think the only person we're missing today is Damian Craigau. Am I correct? Yes, I believe okay. you are. Okay. Turning to our first application, 5043-20. 
renewal by Anderson at 336 Hartford Avenue. Do we have a homeowner or a contractor? A cr contractor here. Great. What would you like to tell us tonight? Uh, basically just for, um, we're just trying to replace two front windows at uh, 336 Hartford Avenue. They're replacement wood windows that are th in there now that are rotting and they would like to replace it with our replacement, which we've, uh, we've done numerous houses in the Weathersfield Historic District in the past. With our, renew with our renewal um, Anderson product. And so this is the Fibrex product with no light divisions? That's right. And there are four windows on the front side of the house. You're only proposing two? Yes, the lower, the lower two windows. Was there a discussion with the homeowners or are they available tonight um, about replacing all on the front facade or their plans for the whole house? Um, they said it, uh, most likely in the future, sometime down the road, they would like to get to you know all the windows eventually. Jennifer, it's Kim. I did talk to the homeowner and the homeowner is interested in doing the whole house. Okay, because it is always our preference not to piecemeal a project um in the to the extent that it's possible although we recognize of course the expense of doing a full house full of windows at one time um we certainly would prefer to see at least the front facade done at one time if possible does anyone have any questions for the contractor tonight oh i'm just amused that they're replacing replacement windows <laughs> as always um, we have had in the past some issues with the actual um, installation of these windows and we've had a lot of discussions with Renewal about having a team that understands what we're looking for with the placement of the window in the plane, no additional trim, hiding it behind the trim to the extent possible. Is that something that you understand? Uh, yes, they have, the, they have the list. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Can we get the contractor's uh, name and business address, please? Oh, I apologize. It's Brian Cap, Renewal by Anderson. Uh, the address I have to get for you. Um, it's in Cromwell, Connecticut. Very rarely do we have to. Um, I think it's the corporate row one, and Linda might have that. Yeah, it is the corporate row. Uh, on the, just on the application, we also have the uh, yeah. Reservoir Road, Smithfield, Rhode Island address. Right, our our other office is in Rhode Island, okay. in Smithfield. Just to clarify, uh, you mentioned that they have the list. So. What list is that? Just to make sure we're all on the same page when you're talking about a list. Um, that was who is the, they? Uh, uh, the, the last time our uh, contractors were there at the, uh, the meeting, um, I guess you guys provided a list of uh, installation requirements. Um, so we have that at the office. So when we do any type of installation in Weathersfield, we follow that, the, the list from you guys. So let me just ask a question of fellow commissioners. Maybe I missed that meeting. Um, did we literally provide a list or did we go over it with one specific application for what we wanted for that application? Like, have we given them a full list for every single installation? I have no recollection of that. I certainly remember, you know, last time they were in, we discussed the previous application. Right. But I have no recollection of since that. Since I've been on the commission, I don't remember putting together a list for Anderson. Right. Uh, now okay. that may precede me, of course, but because they yeah, I don't I don't remember that either, Vasik. I mean I know we've we've spec'd out a number of pieces on individual applications, but but Brian, I, I think you all should be cautious in taking that as a formal final list. We'd yeah. love to get that to you at some point and, and maybe with COVID we'll be able to late in the future, but Right, that's not an approved final list for every application. Oh, okay, so that, that was the list for that app, that, that previous app. Okay. I, I would just add that I think it, 
might provide some guidance, but it's certainly not determinative. Correct. So it's always a good idea to uh, advise the installing crew uh, that if there are any questions or issues before they do the installation or while they're doing it, uh, check with the town uh, and we'll be very happy to uh, step up uh, if you have questions. Okay. I, I think uh, I would add, Brian, I, I think that list you're talking about is developed into urban myth because you guys were held your feet to the fire when you were advising residents that you have been almost pre-approved for installation in Old Wethersfield. And we had a meeting at that time because the size of another issue was in the town council chambers and you had your uh, installer manager, your sales manager from Smithfield, Rhode Island. You came in, a lot of discussion was talked about, you know, some of the uh, representations that your people were making and also what we would like to see in the install. So you, and maybe it's developed two, three years later from that to a list of approved installations and, and that's just not accurate. Okay, yeah, um, uh, the, the allegations um, were brought up at, at our meeting when, when we, after we left the meeting, after your meeting, with our meeting, and um, what we tell- Are you talking about that meeting two or three years ago in the yeah, town council so, chambers? Yeah, so, so you, you were we, present, yeah. Oh, well, no, actually, I think you were t just telling me about um, that information the last well, time you, we were- just mentioned approved. allegations. I don't right. think went from a list to allegations, yeah. So, so basically, um, you know, we don't tell anybody that, that we're pre-approved. We just tell everyone that it has to go through approval. Yeah, I hope you would have stopped as of that meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you want to give some specifics on what you're expecting to see for how the windows to actually be installed, just to clarify? I mean, I could certainly put some things off the top of my head. However, uh, I would feel very uncomfortable without taking a close look at the photographs that I took earlier this evening of how the windows are installed now uh, to put together a well thought out, easy to understand document. Uh, I think if we, if we approve this and we approve it so that the installation matches what's there now, I think I can put together something for Kim to give her some guidelines to make sure that the right thing happens. That sounds great. And they're, the windows are gonna be white? Yes. Okay. Anyone else have any questions or concerns? Hearing none, do we have any members of the public that would like to weigh in? Hearing none, do you have anything else for us, sir? Uh, no, not, not if, you, if you don't need anything from me, I'm all set. Okay, great. We will move on to the next application. Thank you very much. Thank you. The application is 5044-20, Heather Stone at 9 Main Street. Yes. Hi there, we have your application. Um, and what we have, what I have in front of me is a handwritten list, but no pictures or any other plans. Can you tell us more about your project? Yeah, it's pretty much just one by three lattice work. Like uh, pretty much okay. just- can I, can I interrupt you for one second? Can you identify yourself, name and address for the record, please? Sure, this is David Stone, I'm Heather's husband, uh, 9 Main Street, Wethersfield. Great, thank you, go right ahead. Right. The, um, the lattice work, we're not exactly sure what to call it, but it's just pretty much lattice work. It's one by three, it's, it's pretty much exactly the same as what is out front on the porch, um, going upright, you know, and it had one by four, four across the bottom and a one by six across the top for the porch around around underneath the porch. So out front, the front porch is not what you're looking to repair. Has that already been replaced? No, that's ex no, no. The side porch is what we're looking to do. And we want it to look like the front porch. So it's, we're going to do the same thing on the side, one by three underneath. 
and then up on top for the hand railing we're just gonna do a handrail with the one by three lattice work like not really lattice but spindles i think you would call them okay but you you didn't provide any pictures for us or any drawings of the where it's going to be and yeah, I, haven't, I haven't really seen anything around that would that would compare to it like at any of the stores other than what's on our house so I'm not exactly sure if I could explain it any better than that. I haven't seen it at any stores, so I can't tell you what it would look like. I can't really find a picture of it. So are you creating this from scratch or? Yeah, I'm just gonna make it from scratch. The deck is there, it's being replaced as we speak. The, the deck, yeah. the uh, yeah, joists have been replaced. So you're yeah. proposing to put the same deck railings that you have on the, currently the front of the house. Correct. Correct. On the, the side deck of the is house. there. The, the deck is in process of being done. If yeah, the deck was already there. I just kind of I, I replaced all the two by sixes, and then yeah. it, instead of laying two by sixes down as a decking, I, I went and bought the the uh, composite decking that they have on hand at Home Depot and laid that down instead of the two by sixes on the top. Now is that larger, David, than than what was there prior, or no. you're just replacing the same footprint? The same footprint, it's the same width, it's just a little bit thinner. The composite's a little bit thinner. The decking the materials, but the everything else, the size, whatever the yep. size may be, was what was there prior. Yeah, exactly, saying. exactly the same as what was there. Yep. Um, if I can just share my screen, I, could, I have a picture of the front porch, which might help. Yeah, the, in the hand railing, I wanted to do the same type of hand railing on the top and just run one by threes coming down from the hand railing to a two by four on the bottom. Uh, so it's kind of, kind of be similar to the what's in front. This is Doug. I'm just wondering if that railing uh, is high enough uh, to be installed in a new area I believe, code wise. Vatsa. Yeah, I believe the front is not up to code. The front, the front, believe it or not, the front is very, very short. I, I don't know who built it or where it came from, but I, I think what is code 34 inches. Oh, and, uh, I have a feeling it's taller than what you have. Yeah, yeah. What we have there is is not up to code. I believe 30, 34 is code. I, I would I would build them up to code. I wouldn't put them down that far. I'm not sure if you ever noticed, but just about everybody that lives in this house or has lived in this house has been vertically challenged. And the people that built it there were very, very, well, vertically challenged. <laughs> However, the front porch, because it's low to the ground, does not need to meet code. Right, right. Less I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it that short. I, I was planning on building it up the code. I, I think it was 34 inches. Do you have a building permit or did you speak with the building department about a building permit? We're applying for it. Yeah, because we have to go through this first. Right? Yeah, we have to go through this first. Okay, so if if we stipulated that the railings on the deck shall match the railings and the lattice around the front porch, that would be an accurate representation? Yes, there. Yes. Other than height-wise. Other than height, yeah. Okay. I noticed that you're working on a structure on the back of the house as well. Can you tell me what that is? A uh, shed. And is that the shed that we approved to go yes. out in the middle of the yard? Yes. And is it going to be moved out to the middle of the yard? Yes, when it's done. I mean, you're saying height of the railing is four by four is the post, so in one by three spindles. Correct. So you're going to be 48 inches. It, it, or is that about, is that accurate or? Is it, is it 48 inches high? Four feet, I think is, yeah. <laughs> uh, again, the spindles are only three feet, you're saying. No, no, no. The, uh, no, I'm going to build them up to code. I'm not going to build it 48 inches. I, I don't believe it's 48 inches. I think, I think Cody was 34. 
I think he was describing the dimensions, uh, Chris. Of, of the wood uh, molded the handrail, length. right. But he's got one by three pine wood spindle. So three is going to be the width. One by three. Two by two four uh, pressure reel. But you're, I'm just trying to get an idea. I, I thought you were giving us the height. Four by four pressure treated posts. Is, is a post, yeah. But so I, is that I, post I coming off the deck or off the ground or? And good thing, I mean, the, the decking is there, but you know, with no, without a drawing or kind of a dimensional idea of, uh, since we were green, that the front may not even be necessary to be a certain height because of the closeness to the ground. Chris, that, that's just kind of what we're missing. Chris, what, what yeah, did you saw a picture of the deck? I drove by, it's there, it's there, the, yeah, yeah, on the side. Yeah. Yes, Vasek. Yes, Vasek, it would be helpful. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Uh... There you go. There's the yeah. deck. So there's where the newel posts go, and I assume that the railings will go between those. Yeah, perfect. And then the newel posts will probably get trimmed down to the appropriate height yeah. of right. the railing. Yeah. So we're gonna just go ahead. We if we go ahead and stip it with just what code height would be. I yeah. Based on what Vasek said about the, the area may not needing the railing, I think maybe we could use the language not to exceed uh, the code minimum, in case he wants to do less than that. Thank you. That sounds yeah. great. I was looking at some of the dimensional stuff too, but cool. Thank you. Okay. I apologize. I, sh I should know this offhand. I just don't know what the height is for code. That's okay. We'll work around it. <laughs> I appreciate it. And that's going to be painted to match the front porch as well? Correct. I must say that the pick, picking out of the colors on the front porch added a lot to the house. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions for this applicant? No, Mr. Stone, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, ma'am. Okay. Any comments from the public in favor or against this application? Hearing none, we'll march along to the next application. Application 504520, James Clark at 9 Center Street. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Good evening. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks. Progress is looking good. What do you have for us tonight? Um, I'm here to um, propose a fence along the side and rear yards of the property, a six foot um, cedar fence. And I provided a, um, a sketch showing the um, dimensions as well as a um, cut sheet of the type of fence that I'm proposing. Your drawing indicates that you're going to have double swing gates on each side of the house. How tall are those going to be? Um, actually, just to clarify, there's there's a double swing gate on the as, you, as you're facing the house to the left, and then it's a single gate um, on the right hand side. Okay. Um, and those will both be six feet as well. Will there be any hardware showing on the outside? Yeah. Yep, it'll be um, um, heavy duty black decorative hinges. Okay, and uh, some sort not of. Dissimilar, not dissimilar to what's on the garage door. Okay, and uh, some opening mechanism, a handle of some sort. Right. What's the, um, I'm just curious what the purpose of the fence is. Is it? Privacy. I mean, you've got a very, very small yard um, left after the house, and you're putting six foot fences around it. It's going to be kind of. Yeah, I mean, 
certainly privacy. I mean, the yards are, you know, as you know, they're pretty close together. There's there's not a lot of room between between the house, especially on the left hand side. Um, so privacy. I, I also have a large golden retriever that I'd like to keep inside the fence. Um, so those are the, the two reasons. It's it's a lot added to an already very full lot. And the good side facing out, of course. Yeah, it, the type of fence that I'm talking about is a um, tongue and groove cedar fence. I don't believe no. there is a fence. Up. No rails. Yeah. yeah. No, there's no rails. It's equal it's on both sides. Yeah, I, I think it's the almost identical fence that um, uh, on the Lenoche property across on Main Street put in. Almost identical. Unfortunately, I don't have that one memorized. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same thing. A lot of fences in town. Yeah, I understand. Do we have any other questions for the applicant? Um, I think I neglected to have you identify yourself, name and address for the record again. Well, it's um, James Clark. Um, my current address or the future address? Which Either one is fine. Uh, 205 Brimfield Road in Weatherspoon. Thank you. Do any of the commissioners have any other questions for this applicant? Nope. Hearing none, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Thank you very much for coming in again. We'll move on to application 5046 Lou Michaels at 303 Garden Street. Somebody here for that application? Yeah, he's muted. Ah, there we go. Can you identify yourself for the record, name and address, please? Yes, Kristen Michaels, 303 Garden Street. Great, tell us what you're proposing to do. Um, we have a family member who has a gazebo, um, been in our family for a little while, so it has some sentimental value. They're moving and um, we'd like to keep it in the family, so um, we were, would like to put it in our backyard. Yes. And the picture provided is the actual gazebo and with the placement on the plot plan that you provided. Is that correct? Yes. And it's wood? It's wood, yeah. Pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate okay. forward. Does anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? Does it come with the cat on the roof? <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you have anything else to add, Kristen? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, if no one has any other questions or comments, I'll take any uh, comments from the public in favor or against. Hearing none, thanks for coming in. Thank you for the drawings and the plot plan. We appreciate it. Moving on to application 5047-20, Mike and Marissa Pareto at 120 Hartford Avenue. Hello there. Hi there. Name and address for the record, please. Yep. Michael Pareto, 120 Hartford Avenue. Great. What do you have for us today? Um, sure. Gary, do you want me to start or do you want to start? Gary, you're muted. You might be muted, Gary. Okay. Gary Vivian at 43 Old Pewter Lane, working with Mike and Marissa Pareto at 120 Hartford Avenue. Great. Uh, I can start with the easy part. Uh, I'm doing the lightweight stuff. The homeowner is going to do the, the tough stuff. Um, <laughs> we're, we're proposing to, uh, to uh, move two windows on the northwest elevation. Hopefully you'll have a copy of that uh, drawing in front of you. Uh, it's on the second floor of the two-story addition L in the back of the existing house. We're proposing that we remove the one closest to the one story uh, addition and moving the other one, it used to be approximately seven feet from the edge of the brick um, line to the center line of the window. We're proposing to move it over toward the 
front of the house and it'll be approximately three feet from the edge of the brick to the center line of the window. Same size windows, everything's the same, just shifting it with working with the uh, interior plan of, of the uh, renovated area, um, those windows just needed to be moved for functional reasons. And the second half of this uh, modification, uh, Mike can take over and explain that. <clears throat> sure, thanks Gary. Um, so while going through the renovations, um, started thinking a lot about the, the roofing materials and um, I think what we had previously approved was to leave the original house as is with the cedar singles. Um, the extension on the uh, northwest side, um, we were going to do cedar as well, front and back. Um, the second story off the top of the back there was gonna be architectural on either side. Um, as we're going through it for a variety of reasons, um, we were looking to make the following changes. Um, we wanted to make the back of the extension and the back of the original house architectural to match the inside, or I'll call it the southeast corner or out the southeast side of the second story. And then the front of the existing, the front of the addition and the top of the second story northwest side um, cedar shingles as well. So essentially all the sites from the road would be cedar and all the sites from the back of the house would be architectural. Hmm. How does that all come together at the top of the gable? Or each of the gables, I guess. How do you transition? Uh, that's a good question. Um, my guess would be um, to keep it uh, with the cedar shingles, so it's consistent to how it is right now. God, I wish there was a way. To so the wood, everyone's silent. The wood was. Um, the cedar shakes were one of the factors that really excited at least me about this project. And I definitely would be opposed to modifying the main body of the original house. We're trying to preserve as much of that house as possible. Um, you know, it's an interesting, I drove by a number of times today because, um, the view as you're driving down Hartford Avenue on that new L, although you can't see the back of it, you can certainly see the edge of it and you're going to see that it's not wood shakes on that for sure. Um, you know, it, it I, I think some compromises have already been made on this house and I'm sure it's a function of the cost as opposed to anything else because the the wood roofs hold up if they're treated properly every bit as well as the shingles do but um you know i'd be interested to see what other people have to say could i uh chime in here jen i would say um that the what the homeowner is talking about doing is understandable um when we first moved to our historic home, the uh, original home actually had asphalt on the back. Uh, and we ended up uh, making the last choice that this homeowner had let us know, which was we decided to return that to wood while we were doing uh, the front. And interestingly, uh, 20 years later, uh, our wood roof went up at the same time as our neighbor's asphalt roof and uh, our wood roof uh, looks like it's still relatively new uh, and our uh, neighbor's asphalt roof is about to be replaced. So what I can say is that there's a lot of uh, beauty that 
you will probably find that you would enjoy from the back view um, yourself, especially because uh, when you're on the property, you will see it now and then from uh, the front but you're also going to see it most of the time from the back. And the part that you might enjoy the most uh, is the part that um, I can see you wanting to have it consistent, um, but I've uh, never regretted uh, going with wood all over. It really helps to um, unify uh, the home while at the same time other factors like the siding uh, show that there were additions there. And from a practical, on a practical level, you're going to need to maintain the wood roof anyway. So to have the same um, care cycle on the whole thing uh, won't be as difficult as you'd imagine because if you're going to get somebody there for part of the job, you know, they might as well uh, do the care for the whole thing. And you'll need to care for it, whether it's asphalt or seed, or otherwise you'll be replacing it uh, in a, a shorter span. So it's something to think about. Uh, this is Claire. I, I just wanted to echo um, what Jen said. Um, I drove by, but I also walked by to see kind of what the look was like from the sidewalk. Um, I'm out these days with a new dog, which is fun. Um, and it is gonna be visible, the edge is gonna be visible. Um, I mean, it just will be. It will look different. You, you're gonna be able to tell from Hartford Avenue that it's two things. You, you're not obviously gonna get a huge impact of it, but you're gonna be able to tell that it's two different materials. And, and so just make sure I'm understanding the edge from, I tried taking some photos. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have that. Um, the edge from which side, just to make sure I understand. Um, walking right. east to the center of town, right, coming from, walking towards Stillman School. Okay. Is yeah. that accurate? That's, yeah. Yeah, if I'm heading uh, south. The driveway side, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what we were trying to achieve. I mean, we, we thought a lot about this and um, it almost, I mean, for, we do enjoy the cedar, but at the same time, we were trying to keep a consistent look on, on both sides. And um, we actually thought from the street to be able to see from the majority of almost every angle, um, at least from what we were trying to take photos of, it seemed like you would see so much of that second story. Um, so to make that tie together, we thought it looked better. And then from the house, it all tied together and had it look better. So that's what we were going for was a more uniform from whatever perspective you were you were looking at. Well, and I we were share, trying to get share Mark's concern too that at the you know you're going to get this awkward visible I guess cedar peak and yeah bridge gap yeah how to how to, how to join yeah. those two. I mean it's so certainly I, been done before, um, but perhaps not in, on a house of this importance. Um, yep. you know, in, a, in a location where it can be so clearly seen, you know, you're wide open on that side now. So every detail is very, very visible. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so to clarify, I should say that it's, uh, the, I guess the cap bridge would be the wood shake, just to be clear on that. It would be wood. Um, if I didn't, if I wasn't clear the first time around, I was asked, but. Yeah, I'm not sure for me personally. And, you know, I'm again, interested to see what everyone has to say. I'm not sure there's a solution that solves that problem. Can I just clarify, is the current plan, if uh, this modification uh, isn't granted, to do the entire roof in wood, or are we still talking about a mix? No, so the original plan was architectural shingles on the second story addition. I thought so, okay. To, to separate the existing structure to the addition, it was thought that the change of materials would uh, accentuate what was what was the historic nature of the existing house to versus the new addition. I remember that uh, argument, although I have to admit I didn't embrace it then. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, Gary, you have uh, as good an indication of this as anyone as to whether 
consistency in a backyard has any uh, merit, and that could merit towards uh, all of one or all of the other. Uh, but there's the other concern about the distinctiveness. So yep. in any case, that's all I'll say at this point. Thank you. Do any other uh, commissioners have any questions or concerns they'd like to share? Anything from the homeowner or Gary, anything you'd like to add? Uh, I was hoping, I wasn't sure how it works with the, the rules. Um, if we could separate the two items, um, if one is denied, I'm wondering if one could be approved or by, you know, if, if that's happening or both approved, obviously, but, and both denied. But if there was uh, feelings that, that the, the two parts, one was acceptable to the commission and one wasn't, we were hoping to separate those two. Yeah, we can do a split decision. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. Anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor against this application? Hearing if I that? could add one thing. Oh, sure, of course. Um, on another item, it just might help your conversations uh, later on the deck area. The uh, railing on that side porch, if it's above 30 inches off the grade, they have to have a 42 inch high railing. That's what the code says. Just a little information there. Great. Thank you. Put right out of yep. your brain. Yep. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All yep. right. We'll move on to our final application, 5047-20. Oh, no, that was our final. I apologize. Uh, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. So Don't we we'll... have an amendment? Another amendment? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Hello. No, we're uh, having a discussion later at the. Oh, sorry, got the two Hartford Avenues confused. I apologize. That's okay. Uh, a motion to close the public hearing. Hello. No. I had um, filed an appeal, and it was supposed to be held. Hi. We. Uh, an appeal is actually not filed to this body. Um, there's an appeal process that goes to Superior Court. I think you had a discussion with our coordinator, Kim Wolf, to yes. come and have a conversation with us, which will take place at the end of the public meeting. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting? So moved. And a second? Second. second. All over the place. Uh, Chris, for the second. Give it to Chris, yes. I can see his face. Thank you. All right. Turning to the public meeting, application 504320, the project at 336 Hartford Avenue. Can I have a motion? Hmm. I'll make a motion for the purpose of discussion to approve with the stipulation that the homeowner replace all windows on the front facade of the house. Can I have a second? Sure, I'll second it. Thank you. So I think what we're talking about in this particular application, if I have the right one. Actually, be Jen, before we get in too deep in this. Yep. We have, oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Uh, so okay. there are, there's a total of five windows on the front of the house. Um, and I think for continuity's sake, I'd like to approve all five now. They only need to start the work. They don't need to complete the work right away. And so that would give them time, you know, perhaps next year at this time to purchase those additional windows and do the other windows. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I would agree with you, Jen. Um, I think that first of all, you might want to expand it to say that uh, this is an approval for the whole house um, in case they decide to go farther than that so they don't have to come back to us. But I would agree that if we're going to talk about the front facade, uh, in some ways we'd be better off with the existing 
matching five windows longer than to have a, a permanent approval on a hodgepodge or a mix, I should say. More polite. Hodgepodge is a better word. <laughs> I agree. Um, I'm happy to do the whole house. They could also come back for a modification to the whole house. I guess my thinking behind asking for the facade now is that so there's an understanding between us and the homeowners that we really want to see that front facade completed in a timely fashion. Oh, um, fighting off the entire house is a much bigger enterprise um, but they could certainly come in if they're proposing the same product, which of course would be our wish um, to come in for an amendment for the whole house if next year they find themselves in a position to do more than just complete the front. I know it doesn't seem uh, so appropriate to give them so much more than they're indicating they're willing to do to begin with. I just think that it helps to uh, ratify the idea that we would like to see that window used everywhere on the house and that kind of creates a history uh, once our recollection of today is a little dimmer, so. Who, who was the second? I think I was. I was. Oh. Um, if there's a, a feeling for it, I'll withdraw my motion and do the whole house. Again, you know, I the front for the reason I stated, so I can be persuaded yeah. either way. If the others uh, feel that it's a good, good idea, fine. If not, then we can uh, go without making that change, but perhaps we could pull. Yeah, I may have been, uh, go ahead, Mark, sir. Yeah, I think I'm, uh, I, I think I could go either way. I think that, um, you know, the size, the scope, of the project to do the whole house at this point, you know, if the homeowner was interested in doing more, they, they can definitely come back, come back to us for more. So yeah, that's it. one for the existing Chris. Yeah, I, you may not, I may have been muted if you heard my gasp when we said, but Jen did qualify that to match the front makes a lot of sense in that sense. And obviously they don't have to do it. But uh, I would be in favor of the front facade a as the amendment stands, or the uh, stipulation. stipulation stand. Thank you. OK, then I will, uh, having three already on um, that point of view, um, I won't press mine. And I can uh, just uh, stand on my second that's already in place. If I can, if I can weigh in on this also, uh, I'd also go for just the front facade. Keep in mind that there's two failing windows on the front out of five. And it's entirely possible that the rest of the windows were in, installed correctly and will not have to be replaced. So stipulating to do the whole house with no real reason to do that is puts the homeowners in an awkward situation. I appreciate that. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, Vasek. Okay. I just I just want to ask, do we want to put any stipulations about installation after we had that conversation? Thank you, Claire, for bringing us back to that. It sounded like Vatsik wanted to take more than just the meeting to put together that design plan. And so I would suggest that the guidance uh, be referred to in the STIP uh, and the uh, details of that guidance be uh, provided uh, by Kim tomorrow. Claire, I think what um, Vasek mentioned was stipping that the installation matched the current yes. installation. And so I would like to uh, withdraw my original motion and stipulate that the uh, homeowner replace all five windows on the front of the house with installation to match the existing installation. Can I have a second? I think that's great. I, I think if Vasek is willing to give some to put something together would be very helpful. Okay, that sounds good. Can I get a second to my motion? Sure, I'll renew my second. And again, um, I think that saying to match the existing is, a, is enough, but Vasa can give some more specific details to that if the homeowner's interested. So as we and did for some, 
And if for some reason, Vatsik, you see something that um, gives you pause, uh, certainly come back to us, but hopefully the existing is what we do want to match. Of course. And actually, I took a couple notes as you guys were talking and just sort of trying to get my thoughts together based on what we discussed earlier. And I just wrote down things like, Windows shall be installed in the same plane as existing windows. All the transition pieces shall be covered with a single piece of trim. Um, so, you know, along those lines. But yeah, I'll, I'll, t I'll type that up and send it off to Kim. Great. Uh, with that, I think we can call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes with stipulations. Moving on to application 5044-20 at 9 Main Street. So I'm not voting and therefore I can't really make a motion. However, if somebody would make a motion with the stipulation that the railing shall replicate the front porch railing and newer posts as well as the lattice under the front porch, that would probably work reasonably well. And the second stipulation would be that the railing shall not exceed code height. And I will adopt that motion. I'll second. I think Thank what you. they have is they have a very interesting um, railing around the front porch. And if that is carried over to the side, I think it will work well for the building as well as the district. Agreed, Fatsa. Thank you. Does anyone have any additional questions or comments they'd like to add? Fatsa, can you repeat those steps, please? No. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. The railing shall replicate the front porch railing and newel posts as well as it shall replicate the lattice work under the front porch. That's step one. And step two, the railing shall not exceed code minimum in height. Just one last thing, Vatsa. Um, do we need a stipulation, um, anyone, uh, over the change in material for the treads? Um, it's... Or is that not visible? The only thing you're going to see possibly is the edge of the decking right. material. Unless there's stairs as well too. That that yeah. that picture you showed. I think there's already treads too by pressure treated there anyways. Unless they're going over them. They're already spelled out in the yeah. written material that was submitted. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stone, you have or Mrs. Stone, anything else to add? Okay, uh, I think that's it then. Can we call the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes with stipulations. Turning to application 5045-29 Center Street, the fence project. I'd like to make a motion to approve as submitted. Uh, second. Oh, I will yield to uh, Chris. Um, my, I guess my thought would be that it, it's an appropriate fence for, for the district, although I do think that um, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, sort of a closed quarter to, to what the house is in that, in that small space. I do like the fact that it is you know, step back from behind the house a bit. Uh, so most of it will be towards the back of the house. We will have some good visibility from uh, both Center Street and Main Street on it. But, um, you know, it's this commissioner's opinion that, you know, if, if, uh, if you're providing, a, you know, if you want a privacy fence and it's an appropriate fence, I think I have to agree with, with the homeowner. I think I think it's appropriate. I, I share Claire's concern that it's a lot of fence in a small area, but it's an interesting corner because it's so densely packed with the Willard property behind it 
that in a way it sort of fits in with the jammed look of oh jennifer right <laughs> it's jammed so, in the water so we're going to make it more <laughs> i don't i don't know that i have a huge problem with it um i certainly understand the homeowner's concerns which probably won't be so great when there's not a restaurant in the parking lot across the street anymore but um you know i think it's a it's a nice fence that we we have used in other areas and I don't well, have you all know, I mean, obviously, I didn't agree with this house to start with and voted against the application. So um, I think Mark's comment is exactly correct. It's a fence that we've approved. It's appropriate for the district. I personally don't even think we should see seeing fences. So I'm not going to keep him from keeping his dog in. Um, but I think this is one of the slippery slopes we get into when we do something like approve a house that's too big for a lot then anything that goes on is more of a problem. So, but yeah, I agree. The fence is appropriate. There's no reason he shouldn't be able to keep his dog in or have some privacy. Uh, the only thing I'd like to add is uh, I loved the house, uh, but I agree it's large uh, for the site. And the only thing I'd ask the homeowner to, in, to decide because really this is something that we tend to as long as the fence looks good we tend to yield to the homeowner on and i would say that you have built a beautiful home and you might want to take some inspiration from the home across the street from you that's also new and part of what those folks have put up with in terms of a lack of privacy has been offset by the fact that there's still room around that house and they haven't created a, a, a real strict compound. Uh, you have a beautiful view behind you. Uh, you have a beautiful view around you and you might want to be on the property for a little while before making a decision to create, uh, to completely close off the back as if it were um, a townhouse because I think you uh, have built a beautiful home that uh, will be enjoyed as enjoyed more from the inside out in some ways. Uh, if you were to think about other ways of creating the privacy shield that you're looking for. And I think that's the kind of thing that comes with time. I realize you might not have time because you have an animal going there. Um, but maybe that would be you uh, merit towards a temporary fence. As I said, we're apt to yield to the homeowner's choice on this, but I do think that you as a homeowner uh, have really built a beautiful home there. And part of the reason it's as beautiful as it is is because it still relates to the properties around it. Good luck. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll call the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Application 504620 at 303 Garden Street. May I have a motion? I move to approve as submitted. I will second. So completely appropriate um, exterior structure. She provided good documentation and a plot plan, which was helpful. I, I agree. Uh, this is one of those easy ones where they've provided us everything we ask for and leave room for questions. Anyone else have any comments they'd like to add? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Final application 5047 20 at 120 Hartford Avenue. May I have a motion? I'll make a um, I'll make a motion to approve. I'm sorry. I want to make sure I'm on the right one because <laughs> uh, I don't have my agenda up right now. Uh, are we talking about the Francis House? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, for the purposes of discussion, I'll make a motion uh, to uh, approve um, the window change uh, and uh, to. Uh, approve 
the request of the homeowner uh, as well for uh, asphalt on the back. I'll second. Uh, so I think we had a, a lot of discussion uh, earlier and I think maybe the best thing to find out is if we have uh, three votes for the homeowner's choice of uh, uh, asphalt on the rear um, and if that can overcome the concerns that we have for asphalt on the main roof of the original building and the view coming from northbound. So uh, we might be able to just call a vote on this expansive motion to begin with and see where we are. For my sake, as I said before, if I were the homeowner, I wouldn't want to be looking at two different roofs when I'm in the back enjoying my house all the time. Um, but um, the only, uh, unless the commission were to embrace the idea of putting wood everywhere, um, the next best choice um, to fulfill what the homeowner's asking for is asphalt everywhere on the back. Uh, at that point, I think one of the things to talk about is whether or not you're going to uh, um, do some sort of action on the rake to disguise the uh, uh, use of asphalt. And that's something that would I would say needs to be a stipulation so that the trim from the side looks the same. Um, All right. I, there you go. Well, you either have to stip it or not stip it, though, Doug. Because, yes, um, I, I would. I would add. Saying. I would add that as a stipulation um, to what I uh, articulated already. I don't know if Chris would agree with that or not, but um, that would be oh, part I, of that motion, Chris. I would agree to that. And how, how is that being achieved? I assume that you could make a, uh, a piece like that's one, one shingle wide and go all the way down the upper part of the, uh, uh, the, the exposed edge of all these roofs uh, that, where it matters. And uh, that's one way of, of dealing with the issue. Um, you know, certainly they could go farther than that, but I'm assuming that uh, if I'm describing myself, uh, describing this, um, that it would essentially look like a cap that would go all the way along the rake on top of the roof so that it replicates the look of the roof on the um, other sides. So your applicant, your motion then is to approve as submitted with the stipulation that they add a rake trim line of cedar shingle down the side to pre preserve the view from the north side. That's right and uh, again this is I mean from my own personal uh, choice would be for the, the whole roof to be wood, uh, but trying to accommodate what we wanted to see on the addition and what they want to be able to look at, um, I'm willing to consider this as an alternative and see if the commission is. If they're not, then I would uh, uh, probably fall back to where uh, Gary was, uh, because I certainly don't want to uh, uh, I feel I don't feel as though we have to send them home empty-handed. Now, are we stepping the ridge cap in wood shingles, or is that submitted? So we're it's that uh, the ridge cap. I think we could stipulate that as well, since we were um, we're stipulating this. So a ridge cap in wood and a rake uh, topper in in wood. So for, think, okay. for discussion purposes, since we have a motion in front of us in a second. Um, if your purported reason for agreeing to the change to the asphalt is for uniformity of view from the back of the house, it's sure gonna look strange when it's now framed out in wood around the edges. I think mm -hmm. um, it- Understand. It's gonna look even stranger than 
having what has, is often done in these projects where you preserve the original house as much as possible and make additions with asphalt, calling them out as additions. In this particular case, when we discussed the original application, we agreed that the extension of the main house could be an asphalt, but that it would be a nice nod to the original house with the forward facing roof to maintain the wood on that portion as well. And I thought that that was a good idea. Um, yeah, can I just ask that this uh, wood though, uh, finish cap, is that just on the side, the north, that north side that we're talking about the addition? We're not talking about the original approved asphalt? Well, sure. he, he's asking, it would be on the main body of the house and then on the garage on the back portion because those are the two roofs that would be changed to asphalt. So you'd have two trimmed areas of asphalt with wood trim. Okay, so not the previously approved asphalt that we've already approved. No, this is the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah just this area that he's asking for now. Yep. So I just want to make sure that we're just addressing those. Yeah. So, I mean, from my perspective, uh, I think that's a far worse even suggestion. And again, you know, we talked at some length, the feeling of some of the commissioners that this house should have had a conservation easement on it, given its age, its history in the district. Um, its importance in the district and the amount of money that was spent to restore the main body of the house to its original grandeur. Um, and, you know, the, a lot of discussion was held with the homeowner too, as well, about preserving the main body of the house. And so now coming back and asking for asphalt on the main body of the house, I think really flies in the face of what our discussions were previously. Um, you know, I, I'm interested to see what other people have to say, but I, you know, and I'd like to call the vote on it. That's great, uh, Jen. I was a person who made all those arguments and I join with you on them here, but I was curious to see what the commission was willing to do first. So there wouldn't be any doubt that this was given a full airing. Okay. Um, can, I, can I ask a favor of you guys? Could you very quickly go over what the roofing materials were approved originally? So Basic, on the main body of the house, it was to remain wood. And okay. then on the extension of the, from the main body of the house, that was to be asphalt and a pre-approved cover color. And then on the L portion, the smaller single story portion, that was to be wood front and back. Front and back, okay. Correct. And now they're coming back for asphalt on the back of the house? and on the back of that L area. But wood on the front of it, right? Correct. So I, I'm gonna just, I'm sorry, I'm belaboring the point that Vasek just asked. So there are three structures. There's the house, the addition, and the L. And they're asking that all three of those be asphalt. Is that correct? No. What I just understood Jen to say is the house shall be wood on the front, asphalt on the back. The addition, asphalt on both sides. The L, wood on the front, asphalt on the back. That's correct. Correct. But originally the house, we, we approved the house portion to be all wood. Correct. And the L portion all wood as well. I have to say, I don't have a problem with the addition being asphalt as we originally approved. We do not think, I'm sorry? Oh, uh, um, the addition extension, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, not the, not the L. Um, the, the middle body, I don't know what you call it. Um, I do have a problem with the, the body of the house, the back of that historic property going to asphalt. I think that just has to stay wood. I just, I, I mean, all of the reasons that Jen said, it has to stay wood. It cannot go asphalt. Yeah, I agree. It's got a plaque in front of it, for heaven's sakes. You know? <laughs> I can put a plaque in front of my house. Put a plaque in front of my house too. God help us. Um, I have less of a feeling about the L. Um, I think you're going to see it from the street. I think funky sort of framing it just gets complicated, you know. Um, but I, the piece I cannot let go is the original historic home. That roof has got to stay wood. I don't think we'd be having. I don't think we'd be having this problem if the commissioners could have gotten over their uh, idea that 
some of the house should have had asphalt to begin with. That's part of the reason I wanted uh, wood. The whole thing to be wood. Yeah, I because, think you're right. because that's what we found to be successful here. It's obvious that those are additions. I don't think that for the sake of the Secretary of Interior, uh, you have to paint an addition a different color than the house. And sometimes I don't think you have to put a different roof on it. And I think in this case, this has created something of a conundrum for the, um, for the uh, homeowner, because I really do think if they went with wood and took care of it, they would find that that house would be uh, magnificent in all directions. With, and, and again, uh, the loss of the preservation easement was a huge oversight by the Historical Society. Uh, and I uh, would have an easier time of getting asphalt, I mean, getting wood on the whole thing if the first time around we had been just a little bit more open-minded to wood on the addition. Thank you, folks. Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to remove, I'm going to take my second away. And Doug, so are you going to drop your, yes. your motion? Uh, I, I don't think we have to call the vote since we no. polled. Uh, so I will uh, substitute a motion to uh, approve the uh, window changes, uh, uh, but not the roofing changes. I'll second. Any further discussion necessary? No, I don't think so. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Our next order of business is the approval of the minutes from August 11, 2020. And make the motion to approve. I'll second. I'll se um, who's voting? Uh, all of us. Regular, all regular members okay. present and I'll all second it. All those in favor with our usual kind comments <laughs> for Facebook. <laughs> and with the assistance of Kim Wolf. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Uh, to our historic district coordinator, do we have any public comments on general matters today? No public comments of general. And do we have any report from you today? No report today. Okay, and correspondence? First, we have Elaine Cahill at 292 Hartford Avenue concerning her window approval from last meeting. Great. Ms. Cahill, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Okay, great. I see you now. Um, so since the last meeting, uh, we had Kim pull all of your <laughs> for all of your window projects over time. Um, and, and make us a list of your other projects over time. And, um, you know, what we have is this approval at the last meeting that required that you keep one um, double hung and then those two fixed windows. Is there something that you were thinking of that would be a, a proposal or a discussion? I know you're not happy with that decision. Um, what did you want to talk to us about tonight? The uh, grid and the um, decorative pattern, diamond pattern on those windows is the exact same pattern and diamond grid that's on the third floor windows that have already been approved by the uh, historic district and uh, installed a couple years ago. This was just a continuation of a project that's been going on for the last couple of years of replacing windows. Are there any windows that have been replaced. I couldn't see any that were fixed windows, like those two fixed ones we wanted maintained. Were there any other fixed windows like that? No, no they were all double hung. Okay. But they are the same, the same grid and you know decorative pattern. Are those particularly problematic for you? Those, or are they something that could be repaired and perhaps a new storm put on them, repainted to match new windows? I've never thought about doing that. I've had them caulked. And they're still, you know, drafty because they're old windows. The glass is old. Right. And I just thought for a cohesive look with all the other windows, I would replace those. So I guess the, the thinking was, and I certainly want to hear from the rest of our commissioners too, that um, 
we often try to retain pieces of property such as yours on such a nice street and such a beautiful piece of property try to retain some of the originals so that if people were to come back down the road and want to do a complete rehab they would still have examples available to them as to what the original building had in it and i think that it's possible maybe to satisfy some of the commissioner's concerns on that issue if you were willing to um, main, retain those fixed windows and paint them to match the new windows. And then if you needed a new storm to satisfy your concerns with um, any draftiness you might have, which is probably resolved with the caulking, but just for the extra insulation, um, you know, putting on a new storm if that was necessary too, to upgrade the look a little. Is that something you'd be interested in doing? Not really. I really wanted to replace them so that they all look the same and they're all on the white and they were all in that fibrex material. That would, it would be maintenance free. I wouldn't have to worry about them. And like I said, the diamond grid pattern would be exactly the same. I think that um, it, the commission might be open to something that retained those windows, at least those windows, and um, maybe reconsidered the double hung window issue. Um, but otherwise, without a change in what you have what we've already voted on you would have to file an appeal because we can't reconsider something that's already been voted on unless there's a change so if you were interested in doing an amendment on those two fixed windows to retain those fixed windows and just change the double hung window that would be something that we could address at the next meeting sorry i'd have to think about that unless you know Sure, and feel free to contact Kim, and Kim can reach out to me um, if you wanted to discuss that further. Uh, I can't give you a definitive answer because I'm only one member of the commission and we all get a vote on it, um, but I certainly um, can give you what my opinion would be and Kim can give you her opinion and sometimes that gives us some, at least some direction. So, so if you want to take some time to think about it and give Kim a call, during the week, that would be great. Yeah, I would definitely like to have the uh, the double hung because it's exactly the same window as the third floor windows that were approved. Right, I understand that. I, I would like to definitely have that uh, approved. Well, and we're fortunate that the same um, Anderson uh, window is actually available in the same material. Right. Um, that's something fortunate because the, um, the window grids actually on the new windows are, are more successful than we typically see on replacements when they have an unusual grid pattern. We have a very difficult time getting a good look on it. And, and those are pretty good, can, maybe partly because they're up so high and so they're difficult to see, but, um, but it, it's, not a, it's not a bad replication. So I did include photos. You did, yep, and we, we appreciate that very much. And, and I do wanna say, I really do appreciate you coming in to talk to us again. Um, you know, we're always happy to entertain further discussion with people, um, and even in, in advance of coming in, um, you know, for a next application. But uh, give call, Kim a call later in the week and let her know how you'd like to proceed. Okay. And maybe we'll see you again in two weeks. Okay. Perfect, thanks so much for coming. Thanks I really appreciate sure. it. Thanks, Mrs. Kale. Thank you. Do we have someone else from the public that wanted to speak today? Mark Trahan, 21 Robinswood Drive to talk about windows. Great. Mark, you're on mute, so you'll have to unmute. Okay. People have been trying to unmute me forever or mute me forever. <laughs> um, uh, good evening, Commissioners. Mark Trahan, 21 Robinswood Drive. Um, I'm seeking some counsel from the commission. We're interested in changing uh, out the windows in front of our home. Um, we have a contractor who has worked um, with some windows that have been recommended to us. I've looked at the windows and I, I find them visually appealing, but I wanted to get some counsel from you guys uh, on what your thoughts were of it. Um, it's the, uh, the Maj Majesty Double Hug window from Harvey. Um, I know it has been approved in the district and I asked Kim if there was a list of some of the homes that may have been approved, but unfortunately there wasn't a list that was kept on that, I would have uh, maybe provided a little bit more information. But I'm, we're looking to get them replaced. I'd like to do as much homework as I possibly can um, before we come in to make sure that we're uh, making good use of your time and our time. I just was wondering what the thoughts were on that particular window. 
and I asked him to send a link, hopefully you may have gotten that, um, regarding uh, the Harvey uh, Majesty window. Um, did you by chance get that? If not, I can share my screen and take you there and also share. Mark, the million dollar question, sorry to jump in, is what color of that Harvey Majesty window would you be asking for or proposing? Uh -huh. We'd like to replace what we have on the home now, which is white. The Wisner's home is a Harvey Majesty white window. That oh, was is it? Yes. Okay. Um, the old Academy Museum, the Firehouse One, also white Harvey Majesty windows. Can you over. remember this stuff, Chris? I have it all. Claire, you don't want to know what goes on in my mind. <laughs> no, no. Well, what doesn't that, that you it's have? It's a range dark, dark, dark space. Could I, I offer something? That's, that's uh, could I offer something here? Um, I I would say, Mark, that um, we've tried different windows in different places with various levels of success. Especially that particular one um, has not always been the most successful. Uh, and one of the factors that I think. Uh, would cause me to want you to to discourage you from trying to use that window is because of where you're located. Robinswood is a um, street that has all houses that were built at around the same time with wood windows. And although they don't all have wood windows still, they evoke a look that is surprisingly uh, consistent. Uh, you still feel like you're uh, going through the original subdivision. And it's located next to the most beautifully restored building in the district uh, in terms of its notoriety uh, with the bed and breakfast right there. And I just think that there are other windows that better replicate uh, and would still be synthetics. Uh, including uh, the Marvin Infinity, which is now uh, known by a different name, I believe. But, I love it. Uh, thank you. So what I, was I, called, I, what was that I called would, again? Marvin Elevate. Yes, uh, it used to be called Marvin Infinity, uh, and those are uh, now there's one of those going in. I'm sorry, Doug, to jump in. An example of that that was uh, forced upon a homeowner on. Uh, Anderson Farm, the gray, the old Cadogan initial house, uh, the gray ranch next to Anderson Farm, their garage window. I, I don't believe think she's that. proceeding, Chris. Oh, okay, yeah, good. Well, good for her. Um, in, in any case, um, the- There's a little dissent here, Mark, if you're getting that. <laughs> Why would you put that on the table in this conversation? But, <laughs> because okay. he's recommending a window that um, that we that a homeowner did not ask for, and he's asking for a window that has been approved and, and successfully in bronze and black, uh, but white seems to be on this committee uh, to be to be an issue. And well, I, because it shines back at you. Well, well thank you. That, that's the reason. Alone. Yeah, uh, in white it does is what you're saying. And correct. You. And and so it's less forgiving, and. Uh, um, so that's that's the reason, especially because uh, there are uh, other, others that I think would rend give him all the things he's looking for um, in a uh, synthetic replacement window, uh, but with lines on it and a finish that uh, might be less uh, troublesome. Something to consider. So Doug, the question is, because uh, that's an aluminum clad window, are you saying because of the aluminum cladding, it, it, it reflects light differently than what would be on a, a, a different composite window? Sometimes, uh, yes. I mean, the finish on the Marvin uh, in white uh, is relatively active compared to um, other products. Um, and I think that the other the other difference is, is that the uh, Marvin can't be installed without a, or at least it hasn't been installed without its uh, perimeter uh, being visible um, in most app installations we've seen. And that perimeter, although it's flat. The Harvey, yeah. The Harvey, pardon me. 
Thank you. The, the Harvey, uh, that perimeter is flat, which is a good thing, but it just, because it is uh, shinier, it just looks like it's inserted into the window as uh, something after uh, rather than something that has always been there. And uh, as I said, there are, are, are a number of others uh, available at, at various price points that I think do better. And I think uh, one of the considerations in addition to the location of your street and um, the wood windows on the houses that are around you is that you are very close to the road. So something that is set further back has a more forgiving sight line than your particular house does. Um, that's something that comes into play. Now, having said that, can you apply for them? Of course you can. Um, you can apply for anything you'd like to, but we always appreciate you coming in and looking for suggestions of something that might work better on your particular property that you might be happy with, happier with over time. But um, you know the choice is always yours. And you're right, they are on other houses in the district, no question. Um, are they on other houses in the district that are on a street like yours, off of the green, so close to the road? Maybe, maybe not, you know, and we, and we have, um, you know, when new products come out, we do try to give them a chance and try them out in new places. And that has happened. And we have had some varying success with how they've been put in. Um, and then we have found that the colors, the darker colors are more forgiving. But in your particular case on your light colored house with white trim, that's probably not a, a great choice for you. And we understand that. Agreed. Is the um, is the finish? Uh, can you uh, put a more muted finish on the aluminum uh, from the Harvey Majestic window, or is it static and and the way the aluminum is treated? You would have to talk to them about that. We haven't seen it in any other fashion than what we've discussed here. I don't know okay. if they have something new that's available. If it was a sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. If, it, if the paint was less uh, uh, shiny, if you will, um, and they had a different finish, I assume that would put it, the window, in a, no pun intended, in a better light. So we'll uh, not necessarily because of the flat perimeter. It still looks like an insert. Um, I will say that part of the reason uh, there are so many houses with this white window is that they are very popular among contractors, and contractors relentlessly come to us with them. And we have really tried to embrace the idea of installing them where we can to see if we can find success with them. And I would have to say, after looking at all the places where we've approved them, I think they look best on the firehouse. And I can't say that there's another, uh, but they don't look as nearly as good on the old academy. And that's a good example of how the same window couldn't work in one place and not another. So is it's it something to consider. Is it based on shadowing, I assume? It's, Go ahead. It's, it's based on shadowing. Uh, it's also based on how, how much it looks like. Uh, on the firehouse, for instance, there are more light divisions and the more light divisions uh, help to create more white on the window, which ironically works because uh, in the old academy where the, there are fewer light divisions, the grills really look like replacement window grills rather than something that's been there for as long uh, as it has been, the building has been. The, um, our windows are eight over 12s or eight over 16s. They're an odd window. I forget the, what it's called where the upper is smaller than the lower. There's a term for that. Cottage style. So a cottage style. So is what, based on what you're saying, Gut Doug, the more lights there are, the better it looks, I assume is what you're saying. Correct. Um, I think that, I don't know if you'll be able to get around the perimeter issue, uh, but as we say, you know, we, are, we embrace new products and uh, we embraced the Harvey Majesty. But as I said, there are other uh, new products out there that are of comparable price and they render more successfully. And Kim can give you the addresses where those are in place 
so you can consider them as well without having to try them out yourself. I did, thank you for that, uh, Doug. I, I asked Kim if there was a, a list of um, uh, homes that had the Harvey in it, and she said that there wasn't a list that was kept. Is There's that- There's no connected? running list. We don't, we don't keep a list of all of the decisions on windows. Um, you can certainly look at the minutes and um, you know glean that over time. Kim can give you a couple of houses that we know have them um, for example's sake, but there's no uh, running list, a complete list of, you know. Chris probably give it to you off the top of his head. What's that? Chris could probably give it to us off the top of his head. <laughs> I'm withholding that information. <laughs> there's a nice example of bronze right in the corner of Willard and Church. That's kind of an Egyptian looking house that has a neat grid pattern. Uh, we've approved a few in the black. Um, I would say you don't love how those came out. Do you love there you how go. Those came out? So again, yeah, it is a product that that is pushed heavily. Um, and 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 what a little thing about Robinswood. I mean, I mean, when you look at the new house on that, I, I think Doug, your comments about it being a unique neighborhood is certainly apt. But you look at Oldham Road, which is I think very similar, and all those homes have transformed. So I, I know that there's a lot of windows we've approved for replacement on Robinswood as well too. Um, Oldham's actually a great um, example because there are a lot of great successes on that road and there are a few houses that really did not turn out well. Um, it's all over, sure. Not notably a couple, but that's, that street's like a really good one to drive down because you can really see plainly the differences between a really high quality siding and window project and one that was performed half in the middle of the night and then backdoored into it, um, in one case at least. But, um, you know, Mark, we, we appreciate you coming in um, and asking the questions that you asked. You know, a lot of it, I think, has to do with the, that extra, what Doug was describing, which also reduces your, your overall glass in a window too. But um, if you drive around, I think you'll you'll see that it gives a more modern look, I guess, uh, a little bit of a glean that you might, once you recognize it, might not like as much as you think. And there are other products that do a better job in the same price range. Is the, um, what's the composite of the Elevate window, Doug, or Jennifer, or whomever? I you believe it's like the Fibrex that was discussed previously uh, about Anderson Renewal. It's essentially a competitor to Anderson Renewal. And um, so uh, Marvin Elevate, uh, there's a lot of uh, information available on its website. And certainly we want to return the favor of you coming to see us first and talking to us. If you have questions, uh, I'm sure that uh, Kim uh, can reach out uh, to me or, or others uh, and get more detail for you if that's needed. Okay, so uh, well, assuming, not, I'm sorry, go ahead. We're not endorsing one product over another necessarily because every house has to be looked at differently. Um, right. What works in your house may not work in another house and vice versa. But, um, you know, come back and see us when you've made a decision. Is there anyone, I'm, what I'm trying to do is to be as expedient and proficient as possible. If I came back with the Marvin Elevate in white, would there be any... Um, Doug obviously has some concerns over the uh, Marvin window. Yes. Are there any concerns over the Marvin Elevate window in white? I, I think that I, I, at this point, uh, it's hard for everybody to say in advance. Uh, I mean, ideally, the best way to deal with this is to really uh, put in your first two choices uh, and if you can't make a decision by looking at them yourself, side by side and deciding which one looks best or looking at them that way. I mean, I think what, what I mean to say is we want you to come up with your first choice first. And once you are sure what you really want, and if that happens to be the Marvin, I'm sorry, the Harvey, just be prepared to argue for it because you really do think it looks better than the other window. And if you're persuasive, I think the commission will vote with you. And if you're not because your heart's really not in it or because 
it really factually isn't as good a choice for your home. Uh, in the end, the right choice will be happening. But I mean, you've lived there a long time, Mark. Uh, giving this a, a, a week or so uh, isn't necessarily a bad idea. Oh no, I, I have no concerns over that. I just, if there is, if the commission has issues with one particular, as you said, with the reflection off the grid on that window, if there is an underlying issue on the Marvin Elevate, similar to that, I just don't want to use up, I want to be again as proficient and expedient as possible and not uh, overuse your time. And I was just curious if there was anything as vocal as you've been on that. And I understand you're not picking one over the other. You're just trying to give us some, me some guidance. No, I, I think we were trying to point out what the primary concern was with um, the Harvey Majesty when it, we haven't found it to be successful, what that reason was. And that doesn't in particular exist with the Marvin window that we've seen recently. But again, you're gonna have to propose a particular product. So to Doug's point, Come in with two choices and you know tell us what you prefer and we can't we can't make a decision for you tonight um it would be inappropriate we don't have an application before us so um come in with the information that you discover and and make your proposal and we'll vote from there do you, um, are you guys are you able to give me a, a, some physical addresses for the marvin window and or the elevate window you had mentioned there might have been a couple homes i could look at Mark, the one that I would look at in the white that um, some consider not as successful would be the Wisner's house on Center Street. Okay. If I can throw That's in a Harvey Majesty white repl replacement window. Okay. If I can throw in my two cents here. Um, so I think what the commission fights is several things. You're proposing a white window essentially if you think about going into a paint store back in the days when you could go into a paint store and you look at white, there's about 300 choices. So one of the first things you need to do is from the distributor, whoever you're dealing with, is to get a paint chip of their white and compare it to the white you have on the house and see how that works. So that, that will get you the paint color that will also accurate should accurately represent what the finish looks like and you'll be able to compare that to what you have on your trim and i'm not suggesting to get something out of the brochure but they should actually have a chunk of aluminum or whatever else the thing is clad in so you can hold in your hand and hold up against the house sure that's the paint thing the second thing is all these windows that you're proposing are replacement windows. And what a replacement window is, I hope you know, is basically they rip out your sashes, they drop in a box with a new sash in it. And that box has a thickness to it. And that thickness has to be hidden somehow. And depending on the manufacturer, they do a better or worse job hiding that or they just ignore it and say it's a box within a box and of course you love our windows. Uh, I think this commission would like to see that look as seamless as possible. And anybody who can do that and match the color and the sheen is 90% of the way there. The other thing that you're gonna have that any of these windows have as opposed to the windows that you have in the house. And I assume you have single pane windows. Uh, it's all behind the storm. So it's kind of tough to tell, but the, you're not going to have, after you put these windows in, you're not going to have storms. So what you're going to have is you're going to have these simulated divided lights, which are these little bits of wood stuck on the glass. We all, because we grew up with this stuff, know how thick that, stick of wood should be on a what we call a real window a single pane window all the double pane windows have that stick a little bit thinner and depending where they put the glass within the frame makes it work better or worse again it's you look at it you see how it fits if it's a skinny little thing on top of the glass it's not going to work well if it's approaching that usually about three quarters of an inch, it's gonna work great. 
Most of them fall somewhere in between. Uh, take a look at that. Um, other things to look for is where the rail meets the style. Some of them do a mitered corner. So they're two 45 degree corners. Wood windows aren't done like that. That shows up. It's, if I look at it, I know exactly what it is. If an average homeowner looks at it, it looks different. It's not the same. They won't be able to necessarily put their finger on it, but it's there. It's a difference. Again, so if you're looking at butt joints rather than miter joints, those butt joints should be tight. There shouldn't be a little groove there like some people do. Some manufacturers put a groove. It, that, that way, if there's a misalignment vertically, it doesn't show up. Tougher to do, but it's doable. That would be the, you're referring to the inside of the window, Vasek, not the exterior that's clad. Only the outside. The inside is your business. Okay. But he's talking about the actual sash, mostly yeah, okay. there. Yeah. Okay. Does that help or does it make things worse? No, um, um, everything helps. Some helps more than others, but everything helps. Um, I will, um, uh, so do I need to actually bring physical samples when I go for uh, in front of you or? Well, you're gonna go in front of us in front of a Zoom. Yeah, this go format. We have been, if you have, if you get samples, um, it's, it's always a good idea. We usually ask for samples when you're coming in person. What you can do is leave them at my house or at Doug's house and the rest of us will drive by and take a peek at them. Okay. If you get samples. Do you feel as though looking at them at my house would be a better spot if they were left in next to the windows that are there from a color perspective, et cetera? If you're willing to do that, sure. Yeah, I wouldn't charge for that. You want a bunch of riffraff in your neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, a porch, don't you? Uh, or a slight overhang where you could put one breezeway area sort of we'll figure it out it's a pretty safe neighborhood we'll figure it out um all right so if, when is the uh when is the next scheduled meeting and or that i could participate in it's end of september that's okay. gotta get in by friday right um i think he has until the fourth for a 20 the end of september i'll we can talk about it tomorrow i'll get you all the dates okay Thanks so much for coming in. We appreciate yep. it. Yep. Thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, for what you do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Yep. Bye bye. I think with that, if I may have a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Good night, y'all. Aye. Good night. Well done, Jay. Thank, Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank Never. you. Good night, John Boy. Good night, John Boy. <laughs>